moving fast all week. Thank you all for joining us, and hopefully many of you were able to come to IPW last year and experience it for yourselves. How many had a great time? Celebrate <laughs> this day. Thank you, everybody. Thank Sometimes you. it seems like just yesterday, and as Roger said, yes, it also feels really great to be calm this year. So we're here today to tell you a little bit more about all the things that Denver has done in the last year and, and how great it has been for us. It's an amazing opportunity to host IPW. There is nothing like it, and we hope that you took home some of that lasting impressions and that you were inspired to come back again because you're all invited back to come back and write more amazing stories and help us tell Denver's story to the world. Of course, some of you were unable to attend, so for those that weren't at IPW last year, I want to show you some highlights, just a short video of highlights of IPW, and for those that were there, it'll bring back those memories even more. memorable experience under the stars at Red Rocks. Every single time I go there, I feel like it's magical. It doesn't even matter who the band is. So come back, come back and see it again. It's one of our gems of the entire city and it's on the Rolling Stone magazine and it has been ranked by Rolling Stone magazine as the number one outdoor venue in the United States. However, Denver's story as a top tourism destination is much bigger than even Red Rocks. Denver has truly become the cultural and urban epicenter of that whole Rocky Mountain region. And it's one of the fastest growing cities in the United States with about 3 million residents. In fact, we welcomed more than 31 million visitors again last year. And for the third consecutive year, we were named among the top three cities to live in the United States. So we're happy about that. And again, we welcome all of you to come back and experience more on your own. And that's even before we begin to mention some of the accolades, how Denver's reputation is growing, placing us among the following fun things, the hottest restaurant cities, the top beer cities, all of you I'm sure tasted that craft beer, the fittest cities, great list to be on, especially did all of you get up this morning, were you out there uh, getting your exercise at 6.30? And also one of the best cities to visit year round. We're not just about ski, as you all experienced last year. Colorado is great, Denver is great, but we're a year-round destination. And those accolades just are a few on the list of many that we've received. And now that you have the big picture, kind of the overarching video and big picture, we're going to give you some of those details about how Denver has been moving ahead and the Mile High City and all the things that we have to offer, just in case you need a reminder. And to do that, I'm going to introduce my colleague and partner and the big team that helped us last year. Justin was a major part of that. Justin Bressler, D Visit Denver's Vice President of Marketing. So welcome, Justin. No, Good morning, everybody. Good morning. You know, I get excited when I get to talk to three people. So imagine how excited I am to talk to 300, so thank you. Uh, luckily, my colleague just reminded me to breathe, so I'll take her advice. 
I too share everyone's comments from Rogers and Jane's about the honor and privilege of hosting and the excitement that happened. And there is a, a little nostalgia when it comes to a year out. And so, we, but we couldn't be prouder and, and happier to see the, the job that the, the Visit Anaheim team did. My colleague Charles Harris has just been a spot on, and we appreciate that. I also want to say hello from Jesse Davis, our. Director of Public Relations. Many of you know Jesse from previous IPWs, and uh, he unfortunately got called away and was un unable to make it. So if you'd like to say a pro private and personal hello to him, just find me afterwards. So as Jane mentioned, Denver does have so much to offer. We're gonna get to all of that, I promise you. But behind all those offerings, there is a great story to tell. We're gonna come back to stories again and again, and shouts to all you Game of Thrones fans out there who like to hear about stories. And Denver's story dates all the way back to the city's origins with the gold rush and with the Wild West. So Denver visitors can experience Denver's western roots in so many ways. At our museums and in our historic neighborhoods. At the gravesite of a true original cowboy, Buffalo Bill. Or in taking in Denver's longest standing western tradition, the National Western Stock Show and rodeo. A lot of rodeo if you haven't been. Each year, it draws more than 600,000 visitors to the city every January. It's truly a spectacle. So really, if you're searching for a new look at the Old West, Denver's truly your place. So history is a big part of who we are, and it is great to reminisce about the Denver of yesterday. But what we really want to talk about is the Denver of today. And we're going to career, so I have great pictures of me totally fanboying out there. So, but simply put, it's the most amazing place to experience a concert with more than 130 shows each year. Denver has live music every night of the week, so it really is always easy to find that next authentic experience in the city. Then there's the creative side to the Mile High City. You know, Denver has an arts and cultural scene that is surprisingly strong. Did you know, for instance, that Denver has the second largest performing arts complex in the country? And that's just after Lincoln Center in New York City. We have become a preferred stop on the Broadway touring circuit and a successful launch pad for some shows before they hit Broadway. So I know there's a lot of fans of Frozen out there because I heard you cheering at the lunch yesterday. But did you know that that show opened in Denver before moving to Broadway? It was the preview location, refining the show before it opened to the world in New York. And we were very proud of that. But the fact that they saw something in Denver where we were a place to launch that show uh, is something that um, we can be proud of. We've also broken ground with immersive theater experiences like Last Defender, where the audience and the performers get up close and personal, trying to solve a prickly Cold War crisis in this case. But lots of examples there. There are also stories in our public art. So in Denver, 1% of public construction project costs is dedicated to public art which means there's art in virtually every corner of the city. Not to mention a wicked cool street art scene that transforms our buildings into canvases. You can see some of the examples on screen. Now the Denver Art Museum, I'm sorry, there are stories to tell in our museums as well, and in particular the Denver Art Museum, which has developed a global reputation for creating and curating world-class shows collaborating with some of the finest international cultural institutions. So it's not just a place where exhibitions travel through, they have a great permanent collection, they land some great traveling shows, but they curate a lot of their own or work with uh, sort of exclusively in the US. So in 2012, the museum was the only US home for a sweeping Yves Saint Laurent retrospective. I can't wear any of those. In 2013, it curated a Van Gogh exhibition from private collections, and once that exhibition was over, those paintings went back to the owners, and that collection will never be seen again. In 2018, it was Dior's turn with an exhibition that came directly to Denver from Paris. Again, not wearing any of those. And in October, it's going to be Monet's turn, as Denver Art Museum will curate the most comprehensive Monet show in the U.S. in more than two decades. And we're very excited about that. And there are crazy stories to tell being told by Meow Wolf. The famous artist collective is building a massive new facility in downtown Denver that's scheduled to open in 2020. It will feature an entirely new look on their signature interactive experiences. In fact, the director of Meow Wolf recently called Denver the most culturally significant city in the U.S. right now because of the way we value creativity. 
So that's the point. What's the point? Okay, there's got to be a point, right? Well, the point is, is that Denver attracts talent. We have a sophisticated population that craves culture in ways both surprising and inspiring. Hopefully you saw that last year. Now, Denver is also a city that loves its sports. It's part of who we are as an outdoor, active, and fit city. And if we're not playing sports, we're watching them. In fact, we are one of only three U.S. cities with seven professional sports teams, including the three-time National Football League Super Bowl champion, Denver Broncos. Better days ahead, Broncos fans, hopefully. We also have baseball and basketball, hockey and lacrosse, and yes, we do have soccer in Denver, too, with the Major League uh, Soccer Colorado Rapids team. Also better days of hope for those guys. Speaking of soccer, we have been a host to some really high profile international soccer matches, including the CONCACAF Gold Cup that's just about to kick off. We hosted in 2017 and again this year in 2019. Mexico and Canada will be playing, Martinique and Cuba, I believe. Also international women's matches. And next month, English Premier League team Arsenal, huge team, one of the top soccer brands worldwide, will be playing a friendly in Denver. Any Arsenal fans out there? Okay, so I'm going to say, we're going to pitch you guys up together to find, well, I have no skin in that game, so. And fingers crossed, we might be even hosting World Cup games in 2026. So for those who don't know, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico have won what was called the United Bid, the first time the FIFA has ever awarded a World Cup to multiple countries. So in 2026, the U.S. will host games, and Denver is working hard to be one of those host cities. So wish us good luck.